As you step into the foyer of the Mercedes-Benz plant in East London, it strikes immediately. The friendly smiles that greet you are all-knowing. There's a vibrancy that courses through the establishment that's impossible not to be aware of. There's history too, from a motoring perspective, sure, and beyond, as swirling are memories of iconic former President Nelson Mandela, who's had a deep connection with not just the brand, but this facility specifically, as workers famously spent additional unpaid hours building in just four days a special vehicle that was presented to him on his release from prison. That car now sits on special display in the Apartheid Museum in Johannesburg. Mandela, of course, too, a man that espoused the true essence of the power of sport. And so this particular journey, so special in so many ways. Think back to February 11th, 1990, 4.14 p.m. Nelson Mandela is released from prison and beautiful news is made. The day of the release, it was lots of excitement. All the streets were full of people. We were so excited because we've never seen him before. Now it's a question of us moving forward and this came up as the idea from the floor to build the car for Matiba in East London. It was a question of the how, who's going to foot the bill. And the worker said, well, our condition can be that. We work one hour extra over time, free of charge, so that we meet them halfway. That actually boosted the morale of the workers. Through those efforts, things have made people change their minds. Where we are today, it's part and parcel of the Matiba magic. On that special day, the workers of this company made a tremendous gesture to build our nation. I have this sense of pride because I've been part and parcel of history being made. You have this warm feeling where everybody cares, this sense now that you are working for a common purpose. There is integrity, there is trust, there is honesty, and a sense of belonging, sense of recognition. I believe in the future of South Africa and our nation and our cultures and who we are. It's like imagining the country has different races which you put together. South Africa belongs to all living in black, pink or white. Like small parts of the unit that we've built were brought together by Majiba and are all moving forward today. Today, every day at 4.14 p.m., Mercedes-Benz celebrates beautiful news, a celebration of human spirit that binds South Africans together. That's just some of the history that this establishment carries with you as you step inside it. And as for the famous AMG growl we thought we'd imagined, well, clearly we hadn't, as whoops of delight are coming from next door with a final the Laureus South Africa sporting theme breakfast for 2018 is being held. The venue's packed with distinguished guests, members of the media and employees. A special morning is drawing to a close in championship fashion. Things are running a little over time, but for good reason. One of our own boxing superstar Zulani Tete is not only a newly appointed Laureus ambassador, but also the proud recipient of a new vehicle built in this very factory. Beautiful news indeed. This is exactly what happens when real recognizes real. This is exactly what happens when a champion recognizes a champion. You are a champion. You are the champion of the world. And we say thank you. We'll hear more from Zulani shortly, but first, let's rewind. My name is Jean Smythe, and you're listening to the Power of Sport podcast. You need to be following us on social media, on all platforms, at Laureus South Africa. But crucially, share not only this episode, 
but subscribe to the series. Sport has the power to change the world. The support from Mercedes-Benz of Laureus has seen a synergy between two iconic brands that's become synonymous not just with excellence but also making a lasting telling difference. And so in 2018 we wanted to ensure we kept telling that story and exposing yet more people to that special relationship as we held a series of sporting themed breakfasts. And our guests not only came to view this spectacular range of vehicles in some of the country's best dealerships, hearty food and good coffee but they came for their unique insights into a range of sporting events that they would be hard-pressed to find elsewhere. We focus on six key areas, football, golf, women in sports, rugby, cycling, and a fantastic affair in East London, talking all things boxing, which we've had a small taste of already. Over and above that, it was also a reason to celebrate those making a difference through the 25 Laureus back programs in South Africa alone. To celebrate the success of our Yes program, but also leave our guests feeling better about South Africa and the young, steady hands who will guide us into the future. Like William Mokopo, top mountain biker and Yes graduate, who was among our panelists at our cycling breakfast hosted in Santon as we kicked off the first of the six-part series. The YES program has had um, so much of an impact in my life, especially in last year, um, 2017, where I felt like things were actually falling off place, and I wasn't actually in a good mind space. But being around the leaders that are actually very inspiring, it was us sitting together and actually inspiring each other, that you end up realizing that you're not the only person that's going through something. Um, there's a lot of people that are actually going through a lot. So with that, you find comfort in, 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 in a place. And I mean, there are a lot of things that we actually learn and motivate each other and about aspects of life, what to expect and how to handle situations when they come your way. So if my training is going well, everything has been restructured and I can see the, the improvement. I mean, I haven't been in a South African Coast County Top 10 and it was the first time I get Top 10 last month. So that, that, that's, a, that's a bit of a change and I can find comfort in that, that I'll still grow to be um, a very good cyclist. And again, maybe in the future also try and get a team together and yeah, support each other. Well, the breakfasts are also a chance for us to call on the expertise of our ambassadors. And in this instance, Team Dimension Data Vault Kubeka, represented by Carol Austin on the day, as well as Lisa Ulefia from Kubeka, for whom the ambition of changing lives through the bicycle is central to all of our collective goals. With cycling, I think there's a lot of opportunity at a younger age just to develop basic skills. So that's one of our challenges still with our team right now is our guys struggle to descend quickly enough in Europe and that can cause you to win or lose the race and it can cause you to actually drop off the back of the race. So I think the skills development and the tactical knowledge and understanding and it's been incredible over those 10 years just seeing now how much access we have to television footage and I just am so grateful to our media partners and in, in South Africa that now we can really seal the races because these young kids can start seeing at a, a very early age what is going on and, and how the race plays out, which um, wasn't accessible back in the day. <laughs> the school normally, with guidance from us, gives the earning criteria. Normally it's for improved school attendance, improved marks or good behaviour. Mostly the kids that stay within X kilometres away from the school get, get serviced first. And then some other projects, they add a little bit of community work to that where they plant trees or they pick up trash, which also, in terms of sustainability, adds a nice ring to it. We really do believe bicycles change lives, and the more you go out to, to where we do the bigger distributions, the more you see it, and the more you talk to the beneficiaries, the more you get sold on this program. And you know, it really makes a big difference in the lives of the people that we, we deal with. You know, it's nice to be associated with the racing team. They obviously give us massive exposure across the globe but ultimately we, we focus on giving people access and every now and again when it sparks an interest to race it's really nice to see. 
Yeah, we've done 83,000 and we honestly believe that through the Real Bicycle Company, which is a social enterprise fully owned by Quebeca that will reshore bicycle manufacturing, we'll be doing hopefully that a year, if not more, in the not too far distant future. It was an occasion that was expertly hosted by the voice of cycling in South Africa, Gerald de Kock, and also featured Absa Cape Epic star Jenny Stenehag and ultra enduro cyclist Grant Lottering, who once again wowed the audience with his incredible feats and inspiring thoughts on leadership and self belief. <laughs> Gauteng certainly had the best of the early running this year as we then headed for our golf breakfast where head of sport at Cliff Central and talented golfer Ben Karpinski who is well known for his pithy outlook across the sporting spectrum was among the panellists. Yeah well the key word there is leaders it's something that this country needs the world needs even and sport entitles you to get to that, that position we understand what leadership is all about and it's scared it's like they're always thinking next step they're not thinking like okay cool I've done this this is fun now I'm going to break to my friends it's about how am I going to get better how am I going to give more and all gets back to the stage where they're the ones giving and that's where you get these perfect beautiful full circle moments in sports and you realise that's part of life ever and ever. Well, the insights from majors to the women's game and to miraculous stories of survival and recovery provided by the likes of Gavin Levinson, as well as Ashley Buhai and Mark Kayu, and hosted by Jeremy Harris, had the crowd in awe. The Mercedes-Benz Trophy, of course, is one of the highlights of South Africa's amateur golfing scene. And so this breakfast drew some extra special attention. And it was two young South Africans, Ray Tlamini and Tabile Nene, who expertly provided the context of what the Youth Empowerment Through Sport program, YES, is all about. It's a great privilege. I mean, the YES program is a, it's a huge program. Yesterday, my friend of mine was like, hey man, I still don't believe how you involved with the Laureus, like the Laureus. You know? So... I go around encouraging people to apply, you know, to try and get in there because, like, I, I as a beneficiary or a recipient of the benefits of the program, I understand, you know, how much it can change your life, you know, so that's why I really want to encourage everyone to try and apply. The highlight of my day today was just getting to share my experiences with the YES program and how we as YES leaders or what we go through when we go to these camps and how life-changing it is for us to be part of the YES program. I always thought soccer had like these, these themes or it taught me some sort of lessons in life, but I got to see it's, it wasn't only soccer, it's just sports in general. You know, it teaches you a lot in terms of perseverance and, you know, being able to stick in there. Like today I learned that a course, a golf course can actually teach you a lot of life lessons. Well, I'm really pleased that Tabile refers to the life lessons to be found on the golf course. Fair to say, most of us occasional golfers are humbled very quickly with driver or putter in hand. One of the highlights of the global sporting calendar in 2018 was undoubtedly the FIFA World Cup in Russia, with France crowned the eventual champions, 20 years on from their success in 1998. And so we rolled out our own midfield diamonds and potent set of strikers in KwaZulu-Natal. The likes of Jeremy Brocky, the Kiwi hotshot now at Sundowns, and former Bafana Bafana star Darren Buckley joined forces as only a sweet-footed left winger and powerful centre-forward could. Yeah, it's been fantastic. From day one, walking into the club, you can feel that, that winning culture, that winning mentality, and to be a part of it is, is something special. And obviously, with winning trophies, more expectations come, more pressure comes. And, and as a footballer, that's that's the, the type of expectations you want on yourself going into games. So I'm looking forward to thriving on that. Uh, the fans are brilliant. Win, lose or draw, they're always there to support the boys. And uh, like I said, hopefully I can play a bit more of a role and, and put smiles on their faces. The last six Six months since I arrived at the club, it's been more of a learning curve and, and trying to adjust to the sundown style of football. Uh, it's a lot different compared to what I was playing at Super Sport. And so looking back now, yeah, it's been an adjustment, but hopefully this season coming, I can start on a level playing field with all the players and try and make an impact on the club and, and score goals, which is what I was brought to do. So I uh, hope to get back to goal scoring form. In Africa, of course, the domestic game, its level has picked up highly. You've got um, good players playing in this league. You've got clubs that are paying ridiculous money for players that are playing in this league. You have the nice stadiums, the great facilities. It's just a pity that uh, I would love to see more development happening in this country. 
you know, I like to compare Germany with South Africa. You know, if you see the clubs in Germany, for example, like Bayern Munich, they're pumping seven, 70 million euros every year just for development. Why can't South Africa do the same thing regarding the Chiefs, Pirates, Sundowns? Because they have the money. You know, groom your own players, and then you'll have players that come into the elite level, into your, your first team, that will, will produce what the country wants. Those two were joined by the likes of Mike McCobb, but the day was extra special as we also were delighted to announce local football icon Amanda Dlamini as a new ambassador. Capped 105 times for Banyana Banyana, it was a proud moment for us to welcome an icon into our fold. Tish, um, it means a lot. Um, it means that football has really changed my life. It means a great deal of hope for the young girls back at home who look up to me as an inspiration. It means another afforded opportunity to share my story with the rest of the world, um, but also to go out in communities and impart and really inspire and encourage young girls and of course boys to actually take up a sport and really change their lives. The recent success of our National Sevens team, as well as the upcoming test season for the Springboks under new skipper Sia Kulisi, is always a hot topic. And so Pretoria played home to some of the local game's greats and a fervent audience in Menden. It included the likes of Victor Matfield, as well as Jean de Villiers. The former skipper had one eye, of course, on how the Springboks may be shaping up for the World Cup in 2019. But more poignantly, earlier this year, he accompanied a group of youngsters to the Hong Kong Sevens, which reiterated to him once again the importance of the Yes program. Again, a fantastic initiative by Laureus and, and great success with the YES program, using sport as the vehicle to teach values, but more, more importantly to teach leadership. And I think the, the youth of South Africa is so important. It's the next generation that will carry us through and, and they should take the, the country to the next level, but also the leadership element is so important. And I think it's um, another project and program that Laureus can be so proud of supporting and, and hopefully it can just go from strength to strength. To Ambassador Cecil Africa, perennial star the Blitzbox, the man from PE highlighting how special the team's bond is in creating both current and future success. I think uh, Lauris Sports for Good is a really great initiative and uh, just trying to help the guys with the, in the rural area I and mean, I also got a similar background and, uh, and I feel like I can also add value and inspire kids to, to fulfill the, the, the day of dreams and hopefully become the doctors or the lawyers, not necessarily becoming a, a spring work, but also fulfill the, the day of dreams that they have. They can only stop themselves from becoming a spring work one day if they are willing to, to work out and put in the sacrifices and they will become legends of the game. Also in attendance was the chairman of Laurier South Africa, Mornay Duplessis, as well as the co-CEO of Mercedes-Benz South Africa, Johannes Fritz. Rugby, obviously, is very close to my heart, and I see so many wonderful lessons in the game of rugby, but Laureus involved in all sport. I'm a little biased because I think rugby is a great game, but sport is sport, and every sport from we do windsurfing, skateboarding, surfing, we've got a polar project up in Fixburg. Every one of those sports teaches discipline, it teaches camaraderie, caring for each other, leadership, you name it. It all is a lesson that can be taken out of every sport. And we see it, we see the results. You saw today the two young leaders, those are two young, of many young leaders that have come through the programs. And they are the proof that sport can change people's lives. And they are the role models now that take this movement forward. It's those young people who are out there every day giving themselves unselfishly to their communities, to younger kids. And there's nothing more important than a role model in a kid's life, having good role models. Role models, in my mind, are critical for the full development of a young person. Let me tell you that we have 25 projects in South Africa that we support. There's about 130 worldwide. Not all projects last. Not all projects stand the test of time. And, and Laureus has developed a very strict criteria by which our funding is approved. And that is that the projects themselves must have good governance. They must be uh, public benefit organizations. They must have good leadership, constant leadership. We look for that as well before we go in to fund a project. And then, of course, they must have outcomes. There must be outcomes. And slowly we are scientifically measuring those outcomes because now we have 
a track record, 17, 18 years of investment, and we tr- can now track outcomes. And funders that are putting the money in, Mercedes, our wonderful partner in South Africa, other funders, they want to know, is this money being utilized to its full? Otherwise, there are many other good charities and good projects out there education, health, that can use that money. So we've got to be sure that this money is producing the right outcomes. Sport as a tool to build uh, bridges, to bring people together. This is what Laurier stands for and this is what Mercedes wants. And I think this is why this partnership for us is a very, very important one. And I think it's rewarding for both parties. Women's Month was widely celebrated and saw some of the country's most important voices out in force in PAL, including Ambassador Alana Meyer as well as Trustee in Tambi Ravele. You know, sport has really um, opened a lot of doors for me, um, you know, and ultimately has been the greatest teacher in my life. You know, everything I've learned, um, you know, even though I have a degree, I've got an honours degree, but it is sport that taught me the real important lessons. One of the exciting things that I have seen this year is the fact that so many women are coming up with initiatives. Uh, in involving women in sport and I think one, most of the things that I would advise them to do is to formalize them. And our recently appointed ambassador Amanda Lamini shared her inspirational message on what motivates her and offered advice to other young women. As much as we know that women are not afforded equal opportunities, but when one gets an opportunity, we need to make sure that we thrive in that and that we make sure that we multiply, make sure that our sisters are also uh, on board. Um, but uh, of course, when those opportunities come and the success comes, you need to keep your, your, your feet firmly on the ground and make sure that you create better opportunities for, for the rest. And so to our final breakfast of the series, East London, and, as we've established, an iconic place for the Mercedes-Benz family. And fittingly, our focus was on boxing in a province that has delivered to the world some of the greats of the sport. Remember our feature on the Fight with Insight program, who have Luke Lamprecht at the helm, and who went on exchange to Rio de Janeiro earlier in the year? Well, he was there to report back on that experience too. A man whose work in Johannesburg is simply extraordinary. A shining example to us all. Feliciano Janneke and A.B. Chotle, who both embody Mercedes-Benz and the ethos in Loris to their cause, highlight just what it means to them. It's a wonderful opportunity for the plant to acknowledge great sportsmen. To announce uh, Zolani Tet as a friend of our brand is really significant because he is a brand in himself and um, he resonates with uh, our people. Uh, he resonates with many of us. I mean, his lifestyle, his discipline, you know, the disciplined thought, disciplined action, you see it in his, in his behavior. And if you look at the product that we are producing here out of this plant, it is world class. And um, what better way to pay homage to the workers and to Zolani than to give him one of our high-powered uh, vehicles. It is indeed uh, fitting that we end uh, the uh, series of breakfasts here in East London, the house of Mercedes-Benz, and a fantastic story to celebrate uh, one of the sons of East London, Zolani Tete. If you think about what is making it possible for us to partner with uh, Laureus, in the main, it is the blood and sweat of uh, the men and women uh, that work uh, in this plant day in and day out. And how fitting is it uh, for us as uh, workers of Mercedes-Benz South Africa to acknowledge one of our own from Danzani, Zolani Tete, and uh, you know, welcome him as a friend of the brand. What a fantastic opportunity for us indeed. You know, you wonder how uh, East London in particular has been able to uh, develop or produce so many world champs. And uh, I think for us, um, it was really about time that we acknowledge the fact that uh, this is the mecca of boxing and we do have a uh, boxing champion in our midst and it is really time for us as Mercedes-Benz to partner with somebody like Zolani who we believe will truly represent our brand. Today we commemorate 60 years of manufacturing excellence and 50 years of performance driving with Mercedes AMG by welcoming the current WBO World Bantamweight Champion and fellow East Londoner, Solani Tetti, to the Mercedes-Benz family. 
We at Mercedes-Benz are elated to have you as a friend of our brand. Your passion, your dedication of sport, of boxing has been an inspiration to our hometown. Your will to never stop improving truly represents our brand. As we are united by the demand for perfection and drive to be number one. Our partnership with Solani, as a friend of the brand, will see him drive away today in a locally built Mercedes AMG C43 formatic. The C43 goes from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.7 seconds, making it the ideal car for a man who delivers knockout punches just six seconds into a match. And so that brought the curtain down on another fantastic breakfast series. And we want to extend a huge thank you to everybody that made them such a big success again this year. By listening to this episode, you are firmly a part of the Power of Sport podcast family. So please spread the word and sure to download, subscribe and rate the series. A big thank you once again to Mercedes-Benz for their continued support and the two, the production team who once again have worked their magic in sewing this all together. Before we say goodbye, the final word. We have to do it, don't we? Ladies and gentlemen, WBO, Bantamweight, Champion of the World, Zolani, last born, Tete. I'm so excited. Uh, the emotions are very high. I mean, I can't believe this is really happening to me. You know, a boy from Tanzania, you know, conquered the world, broke the record. But today now he's being honored with a Mercedes-Benz top class AMG C43. So, you know, I can't express myself, but I'm, I'm, I'm very happy and I'm very honored. Fortunately for myself, I've got a good team around me. They always guiding me and I make sure that I listen to whatever they say because I'm still young, I'm still growing. I don't know much about life. So they are the ones that they've been there. They know what it, what it is that is happening in life. So I always listen to my elders, especially whoever that is bringing a good idea into myself, you know, because I don't want to be a drunk person. I know I don't need those things, you know, but I just stick to my boxing and my training. And I believe that's one thing that has made me to be who I am today. It has played a big role, you know, the fact that I became a world champion coming from Tanzania. All the other guys could see that truly there is life in boxing. And definitely if you behave and you know you need to dedicate yourself to the sport of boxing, you need to be disciplined when it comes to training, you need to respect your elders, you need to listen to your trainers. That has, has brought me to the place I am today. And I believe all the youngsters, if they take that route, they can be even more than where I am, bring all the titles out there. Best or nothing, indeed.